Don't say this if you go to Japan. Now, as a representative of a Japanese and English bilingual, I love seeing Japanglish like Konnichiwa wasa, Gomen na sorry, see ya nara. However, if you go to Japan and say Konnichiwa wasa, they're gonna say Kono chikuwa? On the other hand, there's things that Japanese people don't say, like McDonald's is gonna be McDonald's or Mac. So here are five words that you don't say in Japan and what you should actually say instead. We don't say sandwich. We just say sando. You might have been like, what the nani? Sando sounds like sand. Are we, why are we sabaku no gara? Well, suna is actually sand in Japanese and people love sando. They love tamago sando, BLT sando, tsuna sando, and even furutsu sando, which basically looks like cake. They often do cut the corners of the toast, so you're welcome. Number two, let's go through some names the Japanese people don't say. America, they will say America, but if you want to say United States of America, they're not going to say United States, they're going to give that up, they just named it Gashuk, which basically means United States, so they're not going to say United States of America, no, they're going to say America Gashuk. Other popular country names that they changed, Philippines is going to be Philippines, Sweden, Sweden, Italy, Italia, Holland, Oranda, Germany, Deutsch. Like Deutschland, England, Yirisu, and Mexico, Mexico. Put a comment down if I missed the country that you're from. So obviously, country names are gonna be tricky, but also celebrity names are gonna be a little bit different. Ariana Grande is gonna be Ariana Grande. Obama, Obama. Trump, Trump. Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift. Cardi B, Cardi B. And honestly, Japanese people do love the American pop culture. Like singers, they really love Taylor Swift. They're like Taylor. Did you listen to the new song by Taylor? So they love Taylor Swift's song. They're gonna say Taylor and not Taylor, but they, they still love her. So it's important because they're gonna try to talk to you about, you know, if you go to Japan and you're from America you, or the West, they're gonna try to talk to you about the Western culture they know. So if you know how to say Taylor, do you know Taylor? Taylor, then you might start up a conversation to make a tomodachi. So you have to know that these names turn into a little bit of Japanglish. So you gotta be aware of that. And if you wanna begin your training arc of mastering Japanese, I have two skill shares so far for the first two steps of learning Japanese, which is the writing system and the basic grammar. So check it out if you have the time. And it's in the description down below. Number three, we don't say Viking. Like Leif Erikson, Erikson, Vinland Saga. We say Viking because it means buffet. I mentioned this in our earlier video, but I wanted to emphasize this again because I gained some new knowledge. Apparently, the first buffet in the 1958 in the Japanese Imperial Hotel was based after the Swedish smorgasbord. However, if you translate Swedish smorgasbord to Japanese, it's gonna be Sweden no smorgasbord. <laughs> Obviously, that doesn't sound that appetizing. I don't really want to eat. Sweden no smorgasbord. I like smorgasbords, you know, but it's hard to pronounce Sweden no smorgasbord every single time. Like if I ask my friends, Ashita sa ano Sweden no smorgasbord tabeni kanai? They'll be like, what? That's so long. <laughs> But apparently, because of that, one of the employees saw the Viking in the 1958 movie and the feast they apparently had in the movie inspired the employee to be like, Hey, well, why, don't, why don't we just name it Viking? Because it's like, it's, it's, like, it's, it's like a similar kind of feast and Swedish people are sorta Vikings, so it's, it's close enough. One thing I would know that some people do call it tabe holdai, which literally means all you could eat, taberu, tabe, to eat, and holdai is as much as I want. Also, buffet, the word buffet does exist, but I would say, um, statistically speaking, most people call it biking, biking ikanai. And that's how I ask my friends and family, biking ikitai, and mara mechatakara, biking ikanai. Let's go viking. Let's. <laughs> That's literally the direct translation is let's go viking. But I know if I ask my friends here to let's go viking, they'll be like, what the nani are you talking about? So I know buffet is the proper term. <laughs> Number four, we don't say mansion in Japanese that it doesn't mean it's a big house. This was one of the biggest culture shocks when I moved to America because when I got here and I told my friends I lived in a mansion, they were like, oh my God, really? I didn't know we had the imperial prince of Japan over here living in a mansion telling everyone I'm living in a mansion. But the truth is, an apartment in Japan 
is called mansion. So if you live in an apartment, people would just say mansion. If you say it's a mansion, it means it's an apartment. And apartments or mansion apartments, let's just keep it as apartments, is really popular in Japan. Most people live in apartments. So that's why it might get confusing if you ever visit Japan and they'll say, I live in a mansion or there's a mansion for sale. It's not that Japan has a million mansions all over the place. They're just advertising apartments or they're just saying they live in an apartment. It kind of gets tricky, but you got to know these. Why are they called mansions? I don't know but they call it mansion. Number five, we don't use these few adjectives in the same connotations as what it might mean in English. First one is smart, smart or smart doesn't mean what you might think it means. Like someone walks up to you say and says, oh, smart da ne, smart da ne. It doesn't mean that they're intelligent per se. It means that you're physically fit and athletic looking. Like you, you look good physically. Well, like as in, you have a fit body. So it could go for both boys and girls. Smart dane means you're, I guess, smartly fit. It doesn't really make any sense, but it means you're fit if anyone says that word smart. Also, if someone says naive, it doesn't mean that you're naive, well, which it does, but in Japan, naive, naive has a different connotation. It's like, it's, it's more seen as a more positive light, like you're pure hearted and innocent, and that's seen as more of a positive thing to get behind. Naib. There's even a brand of soaps, hair, shampoo, conditioner called Naib. And people don't put it on thinking they're immature. <laughs> they put it on thinking I am returning to my pure heartedness. And people like Naib. Another one is a surprise negative twist. I remember uh, this is like, this didn't make any sense because the Japanglish is already kind of translated illy, pronounced, pronunciated. Pronunciation is weird. So it's called cunning, but in Japanese it's cunning. So typically in English you might think cunning. That means someone's pretty smart, he's clever, you know, he knows a thing or two about what's going on right now. But in Japanese, it's not even, it's, it, it, they, they push the negative, con ne ne negative connotation all the way, all the way down. Like if you're sitting at a Japanese exam, and you're do doing your, you know, taking your exam. You're like, oh, this is so hard. You're looking around. I don't know what to do. I don't know. I should have studied more. And you look, and then someone is peeping at other person's, other person's paper and cheating. You would, you're gonna say, cunning oh, <laughs> Of course, you know, you're not a rat. You're not gonna say that. But technically, cunning means cunning. Cunning means you're cheating. Typically on exam. Uh, where you're peeping at someone else's test and then just copying over like what Naruto almost did to Hinata. So Kanning, I remember in Japan, like Kanning you can't do Kanning, which basically means you can't cheat, specifically copying other people's tests. So Kanning means you're a cheater and you're taking someone else's credit. There are plenty of other loan words, but this is the top ones I thought of as now. There might be more coming. Subscribe if you like the video so far. Enjoy Nakama. Like the video because that really helps me out. And peace.